Hey viewers, welcome back to the channel, or welcome to the channel, um, in this series on this uh, GSX 750 ES 1983 reconstruction. Uh, going pretty well. If you, this is your first video, then go back and check out the previous four to see what the history is. Um, making really good progress. Uh, we've got some life into the into the system with uh, some electricals. Um, in this episode, we'll probably concentrate on um, some of the brake components, master cylinders, things like that. Um, keep working on the uh, the rubbers for the carburetors so we can put them together and uh, see if we can actually get this thing to kick over. Um, but that's um, that might be in this episode, but there's a fair bit to do with the petrol tank and that sort of thing. So uh, thanks for watching and uh, let's get on with it. So I decided I would get this tailpiece um, sorted out. So uh, mounted that uh, front bit of plastic there. And then once I pulled the tailpiece down from uh, up above, I realized that the tailpiece actually goes over the top of where the blinkers um, screw in. So after um, Mounting those and running the cables and heat shrinking all the cables and tidying it all up. I had to actually remove them. So uh, That was a bit of a bugger, but uh, not too bad um, Also, I need a bit of um, a bit of seal that goes around here. It sits on top of the rear tail light and I'm looking through my rubber box over there. I found uh, this stuff and that's uh, actually perfect length so We'll get the glue gun out and uh, stick that on and then we can start putting the tailpiece on. Right, that's looking better with the uh, tailpiece on, blinkers back on, a little, uh, little compartment here for your tools and things. Um, wires tidied back up again, a bit of uh, black uh, seal around the uh, over the tail light there and the um, number plate bracket back on so starting to look a bit uh, a bit cool I think now another thing I've started to do is uh, put the levers on so I uh, just tidied up the clutch lever and uh, mounted that just uh, touched up the the end bit of this it was a bit uh, bit scratched and then just sandblasted and painted this section uh, the clutch cable was supplied so that's all good and it feels all right um, then on the other side um, I was supplied with a whole bunch of brake bits off a number of bikes so I managed to find uh, the right parts um, and pick the ones that were in the best condition um, this one the actual base of it was in is in pretty good condition but the the top the screw had been jammed in there and somebody had cut across it to try and cut a slot to get that off so I managed to get that off and I had a I was supplied with a spare one of these and the right uh, little uh, u-bracket here that holds the mirror so I've given that a sandblast um, and a paint and a clean. Um, so the important thing in these master cylinders is that tiny little hole you can see at the front there. You have to uh, make sure that's nice and clean because that gives you the the uh, fluid return uh, back up into the bowl. So that certainly, if you if that's clogged up, your brakes won't work and you certainly won't be able to uh, bleed the brakes successfully. So I just use a uh, a little bit of wire off one of my wire brushes which was small enough to just poke through there and clean out the hole obviously i'm going to have to get a kit for uh for that and uh you know the other um uh, uh brake uh, calipers etc so uh yeah a few bits and pieces to water so here's the rear master cylinder uh, i just thought i'd show you what it actually looks like before I pull it apart and uh, stick it in the sandblaster. Pretty disgusting, right? 
and here's what those bits look like after sandblasting so a fair bit of cleaning involved so I'll give the um, cylinder a bit of a hone out make sure all the galleries are clear and then put a new kit through it uh, after painting it of course so here is the uh, the rear master cylinder and uh, brake lever after cleaning, sandblasting and um, a bit of paint to make it uh, look nice. I have ordered uh, the um, seal kits for this so they should be coming soon. I ordered those for basically all the brakes, the front and back master cylinders and the uh, uh, the front calipers and the rear caliper so they should be coming soon. Um, once again with these master cylinders uh, what you've really got to concentrate on is that uh, that tiny uh, fluid return hole down there. Um, there's the big one uh, which lets uh, fluid in but then that tiny one uh, there uh, lets the fluid return once you uh, release the the lever and also uh, that uh, needs to be unblocked if you want to bleed the brake so there's only a very tiny little hole in there so uh, usually best to clean it out with um, um, a bit of wire from say a wire brush or something but um, if that hole is blocked then nothing will work so uh, uh, that's all cleaned out and gave it a bit of a hone so once the um, once the kit arrives we can start installing that as well now, one of the issues I've just discovered is that this um, shaft that the uh, the uh, rear brake pedal uh, connects to goes through this hole, but um, the swing arm is in the way. So I should have actually installed this before I put the swing arm back on the uh, on the bike. So that's a bit of a bugger. Um, what I'm hoping to do is maybe uh, disconnect the bottom of the shock and hopefully able to swing the swing arm up enough to get this in, but um, we will see. I definitely don't want to have to pull the swing arm back off again because that would be a real pain. So let me see if we can solve that problem. Right, so I've disconnected the bottom of the shock and jacked up the... Uh, swing arm but unfortunately this section here is still still in the way so uh, I'm gonna have to take the swing arm off just to get this thing in so anyway that's a trick that I won't forget bugger one hour later Right, well, if you learn anything from these series of videos I'm doing, uh, it's that one, is make sure that you put this uh, brake pedal axle in before you mount the swing arm. Uh, that was a, uh, a real mongrel, had to Undo the swing arm, take the back wheel off, drop the swing arm right down, pop that in with some grease, and then get the swing arm back up again. That was the hardest bit. So here's half a day wasted. But um, anyway, it's done now. So uh, yeah, good lesson learned. Now when I received this bike, uh, the engine was in the frame, but the airbox was out of the frame and read up a bit on uh on the internet with people saying there's no way you can get the airbox back in without taking the motor out or loosening it off and moving it around so i really didn't want to do that so what i've done is taken off this uh this oil banjo it goes up here to the head uh, I've also taken off the chain tensioner and I've taken out this top mounting bolt and also the bracket that comes up here um, just to give me more space 
and then also um, I've just ground a few bits off the airbox so down here um, just ground that off because that was uh, that was catching on on one of these manifold uh, pieces here um, then also around the back here uh, just ground that down flat because that was catching on this part of the motor but having said that I have successfully put the airbox in um, but then I took it back out again because um, I want to give it a bit of a clean uh, just soak it in some armor all so it looks a bit better and then uh, then I'll put it back in and I won't screw it into place because I think you have to move it back a fair bit to get the carburetors in so typical Suzuki four-cylinder engine getting the carbies in and out is uh, yeah I think you need to be some sort of a surgeon to do it but anyway it is possible right so according to a lot of people online there's no way to get the airbox in without removing the motor so uh, let's prove them wrong <laughs> Right, so there you have it. Basically in position, bit of a tight squeeze and I uh, had to remove a few things, all of the, the little uh, manifolds, the chain tensioner, um, this oil gallery fitting, and I just had to grind a couple of little edges off the airbox. But um, yeah, basically it's in position. So that's good news because it didn't look like uh, taking the engine out was a fun thing to do so um, great success so there's the airbox all screwed in uh, with the new uh, this new little turret bit that I managed to find uh, I've just got to make the air filter itself that goes down inside here and then um, I've put the rubbers into the solution to soften them so we'll leave them in there for about a week and obviously i'll have to unbolt all this and try and move it back as far as possible when i try and get the carburetors in which may also involve uh, removing the battery in the battery box but um anyway uh that's good progress so as well as the manifold sections of the uh carburetor rubbers. I've also obviously taken the, um, the rubbers out of the air box. Um, I've got two containers like this with the uh, isopropyl alcohol and uh, oil in them. And so I've got two of them uh, sitting in there. They've probably been in for maybe four days, I guess. Um, so that's one that hasn't been done. And that's really quite stiff. Um, this one 
has been in for say four days and yeah it's um it's a bit softer certainly should make getting them on a lot easier um so i'll leave those in for a few more days and then i'll uh swap these two in to the containers and leave them for a week so uh anything to help getting those uh, carburetors back on is a good thing so let's see how we go with that now the other thing to mention with these is they um as well as the rubbers, there was also a little uh, metal uh, sort of like spring section that goes inside there that holds, holds it out. So um, they've been taken out, so they'll have to go back in before the carburetors go on. I'm also thinking that maybe I might be able to um, push these through from inside the airbox after the carburetors are in position. Um, but yeah, that lip there looks a bit, looks a bit, uh, high to go in from the back. I think they're going to have to go in from the front. Anyway, um, we'll see how we go once we get to that point. Right. The next thing I want to do is all of the foot pegs and, uh, pedals and things. So believe it or not, there's enough bits and pieces here for a full set of pedals, uh, foot pegs, um, the rear foot pegs I have over here in a box somewhere, so uh, anyway, uh, let's get on with cleaning these up and making them look like new again. Right, there's all those bits all tidied up and polished a bit. Uh, I redid the black paint in the middle there. I'm just going to do a coat of clear over the top of those two uh, large cast bits and then uh, we can start bolting that back on and then I'll do the rear foot pegs later. So I've finished the rear foot peg assembly which uh, turned out quite nicely. A bit of uh, armor all on those rubbers left overnight just give them a good soak. Works out well. Um, well, I had all the bits, it's just a matter of cleaning it up and uh, spray painting these bits and these bits, polish these with a bit of clear over the top. Um, so that looks quite good on both sides. Um, so yeah, that's another thing ticked off the list of things to do. Uh, I received something through the mail today, which is... Um, this uh, rear brake caliper. Um, this is supposedly off a 81 1100 750 Katana, but um, all of those early early uh, 80s Suzukis are all the same. So if we look down here, we'll see that um, that's actually correct. So um, that's good. Managed to find one of those. So. That'll be coming apart, getting a good clean, and putting a kit through it before we um, proceed with that. So that's good. The only thing I'm still missing is the chain guard. So I'm contemplating possibly even making one. So anyway, we'll see how we go with that. Well, that's it for episode five of this, uh, of this series, guys and gals. Um, that was a bit of a uh, lose slash win uh, episode. Uh, lose was that getting a brake lever uh, shaft in and having to pull the the, uh, the swing arm back out again. That was a um, big mistake on my part. But we had a win with the airbox uh, where everything I read said, no, nah, you have to take the engine out or at least take the brackets off and move the engine to get it in. So with a bit of uh, bit of muscle and a little bit of grinding and uh, um, pushing and shoving, managed to get that in. So uh, that's good news because I certainly didn't want to take that engine out. So uh, yeah, as I say, that'll do. Um, thanks for watching. If you uh, like this video or this series, give me the thumbs up below um, or uh, subscribe if you like and uh, tell your mates about it, um, ask any questions you've got, 
uh, or any comments. Uh, if anybody's got a, a, a chain guard out there for one of these models, please send it to me. But we will see you in the next episode where I think I'm probably going to have to get on to looking at these carburetors and um, uh, get them on and uh, on and working. So uh, we'll see you in episode six. Cheers.